All right, it's time to revisit an editing tool that you'll be using often when you need to make a selection of your foreground or a subject in particular. And the tool of choice for that is the foreground select tool. So in this tutorial, I'm going to share some tips on how to get the most out of it. So let's go ahead and jump back into GIMP and we're going to open up this image, which is O2 in the section four folder. And let's go ahead and get started. So the foreground selection tool, like I mentioned previously, is a tool that will allow you to make a selection of your foreground, which you can then separate from the background. So once you make that selection, the creative options you have are limited based on your creative vision. For example, I've gone ahead and I've isolated our main subject from the background and I converted the background to black and white. Another option is to remove the background and replace it with something else. How cool is that? I love it. So these are just two examples and you're only limited by your imagination. So let's go ahead and isolate our bird from the background and review some ways to improve how the tool works so you can get exactly what you want to be selected. Now, before I forget, let's go ahead and duplicate our image layer here so we can work non-destructively. Now, before we start the selection process, let's review the tool options that can help improve the selection of your foreground. And let's go ahead and grab our foreground select tool from this group, right click and select from here. Now, one of the most important ones is the feather edges right here, which is turned off by default. So this will feather the edges of your selection that way it creates a smoother transition or separation of the foreground and background. Now for my images, I'll set this to around five to 10. It all depends on the image and the higher the quality and resolution, the higher I set this. So if you're not getting the results you want, try adjusting the amount of the feather. And for this image, I believe five will work out for us just fine. So below that we have draw mode. So the draw modes determine your intended selection. So in this case, we are selecting the bird and its perch. So the foreground, so we're going to select draw foreground. But if you wanted to, you could select or target the background instead with draw background. So if you ever find yourself trying to select a subject and it's not working as it had in the past, make sure you have draw foreground selected. Okay, so we have stroke width, which is actually the brush size. And I'm not sure why they called it a stroke, but if you want a larger brush size, you can do that from here. All right, so under that we have preview mode and we can choose either color or grayscale. And I'm not sure what grayscale does because for me, it doesn't really show anything except a solid gray and black overlay. So let's stick with color for now. All right, so next we have our engine. So the engine is what drives the foreground select tool. It's actually an algorithm that you can use to change how the tool functions. So the engine types are Matting Global and Matting 11. Now each will produce different results depending on whether you're on a Linux machine, Windows, or a Mac. Personally, I prefer to use 11 for my photos. So you'll have to experiment to see what works best for your images. Now, depending on which engine you use, you'll have some different options to choose from to refine how it works. So for Levin, we have levels and active levels. And then for global, we have iterations. So for these, I will typically just use the default options and then I will refine my final selection with the quick mask mode if needed. And that seems to work best and fastest for my workflow. Again, play around with the options to see the results you get from each, and then you can decide what works best for your workflow. All right, so let's go ahead and isolate our foreground by making our initial outline like we did previously in a different tutorial. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just the initial selection process. And we're gonna go all the way around back until we see this yellow circle. Then you can hit enter or return to get into the next step. So what I like to do is I like to make an outline of the inside of my subject with a fairly small brush, not too small, but small enough so I can get most of the subject selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
create an outline like so to begin the process of telling GIMP these are the colors, the textures, the contrast that I want you to target because this is part of the foreground. So once I get my initial outline done, I'll then go in with a smaller and larger brush to fill in the other areas. Now, the one thing I want to point out is the color of my brush stroke is probably different from yours. And that's because GIMP is using the foreground color swatch and the color that you have set in there. And it doesn't really matter what color you use because it's just being used to target specific areas of the image. So GIMP knows what's the foreground and what is the background. All right, so I'm not gonna make this perfect. You know how to do it now. So the next step is to hit enter or return. And that's going to update the overlays to give you a better idea of where the foreground is at this point. So now you can go in and refine your selection if needed by brushing on and off according to what you need to update for the selection process. Or you can do what I do, and that is use the quick mask mode after it's made the initial selection. So you can do that by hitting enter or return, and then GIMP will do its final analyzation and give you your selection. And boom, there's your selection. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to delete the background, but first we need to invert the selection since the bird in our foreground here is selected. So let's go up to select and click on invert. Here's the keyboard shortcut, command or control plus the letter I. Now that the background is selected, we can delete it with our backspace key or our delete key. The only problem is we're left with a solid color based on the color in our background color swatch here. And that's not what we want. We want transparency. So let's undo that with command or control plus the letter Z. What we want to do, like we've talked about previously in a different tutorial, is we want to add transparency to that layer by right clicking and selecting add alpha channel. So an alpha channel adds that transparency. Now, when you delete, you're left with transparency. How cool is that? I love it. Now, there's one problem. This is not the way I recommend removing your backgrounds. There is a better non-destructive way to do this. So what I would like you to do is to keep everything in place as it is right now and go into the next tutorial where we're going to learn the proper way of removing the background. And I'm going to give you some pro tips on the tool that we're going to use to do this. So if you're ready for that, let's do it.